Well, it's made me realise what the consequences can be. I think it's a good idea because it lets everybody share their own opinion about something. I know what to do to solve the problem. You get to know what the other person is thinking. What it does is it moves away those niggly issues, those behavioural problems that get in the way of pupils making progress. In 2008, Greycourt Comprehensive introduced restorative approaches, a new way to tackle behavioural issues in schools, followed two years later by its feeder school, St Richard's Primary. Restorative approaches isn't simply a case of sitting down and having a chat with a child. It's so much more than that. In the past, we would have operated, as most schools, that there's been an incident of whatever description and therefore there has to be uh, a culprit and some sort of punishment dished out. Now we look to think there's been an incident, how can we actually put things right, how can we move things forward, rather than what punishment do we need to, to dish out. It is a very structured process. Everybody knows that they're going to be asked five questions, so they're able to say what happened, how they were thinking, what they were feeling. They're given time to think about who's been affected and how those people have been affected. Um, students are also then given the opportunity to think about what they need to put things right and then obviously what needs to happen in the future. So it's not just that moment they think about, they also think about what's going to happen further down the line to make sure it doesn't happen again. Restorative approaches is a way of preventing and repairing conflict. It brings students together to discuss the harm caused and resolve issues. How does it work in practice? To take restorative approaches on board, there has to be a complete wholesale change in mindset within the school, and that's every single member of staff and with the students as well. The teachers are, I think, more enabled to have conversations with students rather than so be directed with them. It puts the emphasis on the student to make the right choice, and it gives them, it encourages them to take ownership of their behaviour. It also, I think, minimises conflict. I'd like to say, like, Sorry to people in my maths class because I think that I did disrupt quite a lot. One of the issues of simply punishing a student when something goes wrong for you know, part of their behaviour doesn't often mean they go away and reflect on what's happened. They very often go away and feel cross that they've been punished. And one of the very positive things about restorative approaches is that it gives them a, an opportunity to listen to what the impact of their behaviour has been on somebody else. Mm, okay. We didn't really mean to hurt her feelings. So what are we going to do to sort this out then, people? Maybe say sorry. The best thing about restorative approaches is its unique flexibility. The fact that it can be used to sort out any kind of problem in any given situation. It can be done on corridors, it can be done in an office, it can be done everywhere and it's that flexibility and it really enables you to get to the root of a problem. Clearly the teachers think it works, but what do the students think? It helps with my learning more because I'm comfortable in my surroundings and I know that I can like trust everyone and I can talk to them easily. Uh, it's a good process because it just shows all our points of views and see how we felt about what happened. It's a lot easier to sort things out because you can talk about it calmly and not flip out and get angry. It's a better way of solving issues. You have pupils at our school that will say, Sir, this issue has happened at lunch. We need a restorative meeting so that we can move on tomorrow and sit next to each other so we can carry on being in the same tutor group as each other. So they've taken on the language of restorative justice to be able to solve their own problems. And it's not just the students' problems, restorative approaches have had an impact on. The, the difference in the relationships between teachers and staff is, is it's tangible. It's, it's created a completely different ethos to the one that existed before. Teaching assistants feel they're now listened to by the children before they definitely felt like there was no respect for teaching assistants in the school. And there's no turnover in staff in terms of teaching assistants. So I think we all feel like it's a happier place to be, but also a place where we're, staff are more empowered. It's had an enormous impact. And I think what it's also done is contributed to the fact that because the ethos has changed, so that means we have um, staff that stay. There's real evidence that both schools have changed for the better. It feels like a happier place. It feels like when you approach children to help them resolve a conflict instead of them running away from you, they actually run towards you as grown-ups. We've had no fixed-term exclusions, so that is a real improvement for us. 
grade court school wasn't a great school behaviourally five, six years ago. On implementing restorative justice at the school, we now have a school that is calm and purposeful and focused on learning. And it only looks set to improve. The future looks very bright with the restorative approaches at Grey Court. Um, we, we feel as though it's established and embedded within our practice now, but that's not the end point. Um, we continue to develop that work so that the whole, um, that the whole restorative approaches actually works all the way through the age ranges.